how are you going to go through the hiring process to all of a sudden get, you know, is it having a lawyer on, on a team is a expensive proposition because each one costs a lot of money and have so much responsibility and they could burn their ship down. <laughs> that's not my, each person. That, that's burn. true. So uh, how are you dealing with that aspect of, of the well, expansion? I mean, when you're part of, uh, when you have an affiliation with a, a large organization that has professionals dedicated to uh, the human resource function, to the training function, to the onboarding process, um, and you, you have a better sense of, of uh, these people are going to be uh, um, welcomed into the fold yeah. uh, with some thoughtfulness and not just dropped into the middle of a corporate client relationship with no preparation. Um, the, there is an orientation process, but there's also a mentoring rule where we assign mentors to each new person coming in. And, uh, and so there's a, a way to ask questions, a way to get guidance, a way to feel comfortable, and gradually to demonstrate your talents. You know, that mentoring is so important. So many law firms I've seen uh, in just all of law, but even in immigration is, they just pluck someone out, drop them in, and they're like sink or swim. And, and it's a weird way to bring an associate on the team and to like have success and not train him, not mentor him, to just say, do it and figure it out. It always shocks me when people tell me that that's how they learn, which is pretty frequent. Um, you really need someone there to, you know, smooth things over. Why not fast forwards to everything? So that's great, but it's just more responsibility for you to do along with all these other things. So uh, your, your mm -hmm. schedule is packed. I'm glad you got that vacation in France, especially before the riots kicked in. <laughs> perfect timing. Yes, yes, it was perfect timing. <laughs> and so, um, I mean, well, yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say, when, when lawyers are faced with that sink or swim uh, approach within the firm, it's time to reach out. And, and organizations like ALA uh, can provide a, a wealth of support yeah. uh, for yeah. issues of ethics, practice management, substantive law, and, and also developing one's own um, cadre of trusted colleagues where you don't necessarily reveal client names. You don't reveal client names, yeah. but you reveal factual scenarios and you ask how would you deal with this because if if you don't have the resource in the firm uh, the ethics rules say that a lawyer can only practice if they are competent to do so and they can gain competence by allying with um with lawyers who are competent and so it it, it takes a village as as they say yeah what really helped me when i started is when i you know, I, I was a practicing immigration law for two years before I joined ALA, and then I got active in the local chapter, and I met a lot of friends, and it came so easy just to just email them and say, hey, what is this? What is this? And, you know, it's not embarrassing. It's a small group. It's not the listserv where everyone can see it, and uh, because their friends will answer it, and you're not as worried about, obviously, again, you don't reveal the client's name, but it, it's a little more open when you have discussion with them about the facts than you can in a very public forum. So that's really key, just to join as many of these groups as possible to develop one-on-one -on -one relationships on this. Now, I have a question. You had uh, I, I would also suggest there's there's another way to do it. And some people call it a mastermind group. Some people call it a brain trust. Uh, but uh, I started something like that 20 years ago, the Alliance of Business Immigration Lawyers. Uh, when I left a big law firm and started my own boutique immigration practice, I felt uh, uh, that my team were members were reluctant to give me the straight scoop uh, and that uh, there were issues of management and uh, consequence to that management that were beyond my scope. And so I identified some people who I thought were high caliber lawyers from around the country, and we formed a group. And there's nothing to stop anyone else from doing the same thing. Identify your contemporaries and uh, meet uh, regularly. Uh, nothing like face-to-face, -face. Zoom and and, and uh, um Teams are, are great, but nothing like getting together, turning off the cell phones, uh, putting away the laptop, and just brain trusting together. And eventually, um, there will be a, a crisis situation that arises like COVID-19, where you've got a pre-existing uh, group of people where there's been trust built up. You know, we're competitors, but we're, we're also colleagues and collaborators.